Hey everybody, Chris McGarrahan Jr. here. Welcome back to Coffee Talk. Looks a little bit different here because I'm, a, I'm with a very, especially compared to the guests I usually have, very unique guest. We're going to talk business, we're going to talk martial arts, we're going to talk fighting and everything in between. I'm here with my good friend, Sifu Patrick Marcel, uh, one of the head instructors of what I would consider the top martial arts school and business what I've seen in planet Earth, right? Now, that's my biased <laughs> opinion. I know you guys pretty well have trained with you. I would say you're one of the head instructors in the, you know, maybe the coolest, most prominent, and most efficient martial arts studios on planet Earth, uh, Pat Node Kung Fu and Martial Arts. So, first, Patrick, thank you for uh, you're welcome. spending a few times with me. So, first and foremost, you know, we're going to go train in a second, and yep. I've trained with you in the past. You're, again, I might be a little biased. You're one of the baddest dudes on planet Earth. You're a big suck up. All right, I'm not. A, maybe I'm a suck up because we're about to go train. I don't want to get. A, I don't want to get beat up too bad. But put it this way, you know, UFC fighters, professional mixed martial artists, they say that you're one of the baddest dudes on planet Earth. Now, this is very different, especially for most of my audience. You know, they're not fighters. They're not martial artists. A lot of them are entrepreneurs, business mm -hmm. people, or just people with goals. Even like, yep. you know, I want to lose ten pounds. I want to get in shape. So I want to kind of connect the dots. What are some principles in martial arts that are applicable in all areas of life, whether it's business, relationships? I know you got some crazy stories with kids that came into the gym with low self-esteem, low confidence, mm -hmm. and you help them turn into literally like they're professional fighters, but yeah. they feel good about themselves. Exactly. So first and foremost, can you tell a little bit about your story? Like how did you get involved in martial arts and how long you've been doing it and what are you up to today? I got involved in martial arts when I was nine years old. Um, I was always in, in the, on the my, my mom's side of the family are all fighters, uh, boxers, <laughs> brawlers, uh, street fighters. My your mom included? Uh, no, my mom is the <laughs> oldest one, so she had to keep everybody in line. Uh, my grandfather was actually um, a guy. He was a bouncer at the tavern in my in the small town where I grew up for almost twenty years. Okay. So he grew up in uh, lumberjack camps and mining camps in the north of Canada. Yeah. Uh, so he grew up in a rough environment. So he brought that back, and all my uncles. So it trickled down to me. I was always in an environment where fighting is kind of encouraged, cool. Uh, I have a lot of stuff I could say. Like my grandfather, when he was drinking at the Christmas, was you know, if you can't fight, you don't belong here. Whoa. You know, when I was, a, I was a little kid and I was hearing that, okay, wow. or, you know, all these kind of things, uh, you know, when they would get drinking and get kind of weird. Yeah. So I grew up in that environment where... You got to learn yeah, how to fight. And fighting is encouraged and, you know, uh, they would say stuff, oh, we don't have the most money, but nobody can mess with us or, you know, people respect us. So yeah. I associate a lot like fighting and being tough with... Success. Basically. Success yeah. or, you know, your, people know you. Yeah, people respect you. Might not be in a good way all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that I learned with the martial arts. You know, wow. to be, you know, you don't want to be a bully. You don't want to be. You want to be a good person. Mm -hmm. So I learned that in the martial arts. But the the, the fighting aspect or that uh, aggressive side that came from my mom's side of the family and where I grew up. So uh, Stefan, who is uh, same age as me, was uh, one of the the eldest of the Patnode boys. Yeah, uh, he said my dad's going to do a class uh -huh. for kids. I think we were in 1985 or 86, so he says uh, you should come because uh, we were in the same uh, same class at school. And I said, of course, I'm going to go. Yeah, so yeah, I started. Yeah. I went. I was the first one to sign up. Uh, wow. When and they at, started at this the point, class. you're already getting fights at school all the time. The yeah, 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 all the time. All the time. Okay. Yeah, all the so time. So this is natural for you to yeah, go sign always up. Always natural. Okay. And like that's cool. I'm going to learn some stuff. And you know. Growing up watching, you know, Rocky, Rambo, <laughs> all that stuff when you're six or seven, I don't think you're supposed to watch that. Yeah. But at my uncle's uh, house, it was always one of those, you know, <laughs> every uncle I had was, that's what we watched. You guys had really interesting Christmas there parties, man. Yep. It was different. They used to fight each other and they were not, uh, I would say different role models as far as, uh, um, they, they taught me some nice things, but I wouldn't say that I would want my kids to learn those values as well as, you know, for... Uh, yeah, plus it, it's a different time, Absolutely, right? very. We're a talking a long time ago. It doesn't really work today. No, I look young, but I'm not that young, you know? <laughs> you, look very, you look very young, man. I was telling you in the car, I got to start drinking the Canadian water. There you go. So, all right, so you're young, you yep. kind of grow up in this you're pretty, pretty street fight heavy environment, yep. and you find martial arts. Martial arts for me right away was the... I enjoyed the the discipline of it, the structure. Um, I've said this before to other people. I always found that martial arts made you 
become different than the average person, you know? Whether it be, you know, you're doing the splits, you're doing yeah. different types of push-ups. Um, a bit like, a, you know, if we call it like Game of Thrones, you know? Yeah. You train and you know things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know things that, you know, I'm, you're, I'm different. You know, I do martial arts. Yeah. So to me, doing martial arts was, it made me feel, it gave me confidence. It gave me a, a sense of direction and discipline and training and the art, you know, to, to be able to move your body, to do things with skill. Mm -hmm. And I applied that in different sports, you know, when, you, when, you were, when you're in high school and physical fitness and training. And so that's how I got into the martial arts. And me, I took it uh, like a fish to water. Like uh, after I started, I don't think I missed a class ever. Uh, that's all I did. I read martial arts, watch martial arts movies, watch martial arts fights. Yeah. Um, the different uh, people that I've met and I've trained with, you know, I used to read about them in magazines. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it, was, uh, it just became a, a passion yeah. and a, a way of life and to something that I just wanted to excel at um, and also to share. Like I remember I was in 14 and 15 and I was already... You know, anybody who wanted to learn something, I was, I was ready to teach them. And in yeah. my head, everybody should, have, should do martial arts. And it was so cool. Man. I couldn't believe why, why doesn't everybody want to do this. Yeah. So I, I had that little excitement. This is, I'm so glad you said that. This is literally, believe it or not, the key to sales. Okay. In business, martial arts, anything. Selling an idea, what movie you want to go watch. Mm -hmm. So and that's why I say a lot on, on Coffee Talk or even just conversations – Martial arts helps so much in business. And you actually just nailed one of the reasons. Like, I, I wanted to tell everyone. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't want to do it, they weren't interested, I couldn't understand why. No, like, this is so not. cool. Yeah. So, and you know, you, you definitely wouldn't call yourself a salesman. You would call yourself a mixed martial artist. Yeah, for sure. But believe it or not, when you have that obsession, because that's what it is, yep. right? You're definitely obsessed with martial arts. I would say so. Yeah. You're, you're in your 40s. You're still sparring with kids in their 20s. Yeah, every day. Every day for five, six hours a day, you're training. Yeah. I would say this is an obsession. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when we talk about martial arts, we talked for about an hour before this. Yeah. We just talked about martial arts. Yep. So when you're obsessed with something, and this is a principle for you guys to, to listen to, you can't help but talk about it. No, absolutely not. You can't, you can't no. help but. Right? Now, if I told you, hey, go sell this lotion. Go talk about this energy drink. Go talk about this vitamin. You'd actually have to work at it. You'd have to, I wouldn't have that spark. It that, wouldn't be natural. You'd have no. to force yourself. Yep. You don't have to force yourself to talk martial arts. Absolutely to not. tell people about a technique or tell them about the way of uh, Feng Chen Do. It's natural. And I believe in it 100%. Yeah. In what it brings to a person, what I've... Um, what I've gained from it, yeah. whether it be spiritually, mentally, physically, apart from all the fighting or the physical aspect, everything that it's helped me in my life as a person, I believe in that 100%. So that whole ensemble is when I present what martial arts uh, mean to somebody, I'm talking about all that stuff. Of course. You know? so, that's, yeah. uh, so I think that's important that when you, if you're selling something, you have to believe in that product or what you're doing on your, or your service. 110% like in your soul kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. You got to have the obsession. Oh, yeah. But you got to believe in the obsession as well. Oh, like you can sure. be obsessed with the wrong thing. You can Absolutely. Be, right? Yeah. yeah. You got to be obsessed but then believe that this is going to help people. And that's the key to sales. Now, you know, kind of talking about your business now, we were talking a few minutes ago. You're doing very well. I see the videos on Facebook. If you don't follow Patrick on Facebook, he's going to be tagged in this video. Make sure to friend uh, request him. Watch some of his videos each night. I'm seeing, I don't even know how many people, but your gym is packed with people. Yeah. All colors, shapes, sizes, Absolutely. skill level. Yeah. And so much so that you're actually going from a 3,500 square foot gym yeah. to an 8,000 square foot gym. Yeah, very soon. Very soon. Yeah. Uh, and for his students watching, it's a minute away, so it's not drastic change. Oh, no. But now let me translate this because obviously you grew up as a fighter. Mm -hmm. So they may say, oh, well, martial arts is natural to you. Martial arts is normal to you. But let's talk about some of your students, particularly guys like Julian, yep. Nick, even Dave. Yep. Um, we could throw a few other young guys in the Oops, mix, right? Yeah, yeah. But a lot of young people come to you with zero confidence. Uh, not in the best shape physically. Absolutely. And definitely can't fight. Nope. Now some of these guys are professional fighters. Yep. 
looking like they have a very promising career. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? I think first I transferred my passion in them, right? Mm -hmm. Made them believe in themselves. And to, at first you have to give them that motivation. You know, what's your goal? Do you really want this? Mm -hmm. Some guys like Julien couldn't do a push-up after a push-up contest in high school at 16 years old. So that wow. gave him, you know, um, they always say when you want to sell something, you have to find what the other guy wants. You know, something that hurts. Yeah. What hurts, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you have a toothache, you go to the dentist. Yeah. It hurts. How yeah. much is, does it cost? You I'll don't figure really, it out. You're going to have to go. It hurts so yeah. much. So you have to find that thing. Um, Dave had another thing when he came in. But all these guys came in where they were in their te like teens, you know, 14, 16, 17. They had never done martial arts before. You know, Dave played baseball. Julien, I think he, what he did is just hung around the pool pretty much, <laughs> I think. Uh, I had other guys that came in uh, the wrong side of the tracks, I, I could say. Like they were going in a very bad direction. Yep. Uh, so for them is to show them there's, there's a better way mm -hmm. than where you're going. Yeah. And do you see how much potential you guys have? And I think everybody has potential. Uh, I believe in the biggest thing you asked me earlier, like the, one of the biggest qualities for martial arts, for me that we can apply in life is discipline. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to work, you can achieve your goals. Yeah. A lot of people, they don't want to put in the work. Yep. You know, they for want sure. the pills. They want the easy fast track. They yep. want, uh, I'll, you know, uh, oh, I'll do surgery. I'll do all that stuff like we talked about in the car, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they won't put in the work. So at the first thing I teach a student that comes in any age they're at, you know, I have people that come in in their fifties and they want to lose weight and they're, yeah. you know, unhappy where, where they're at. They just got divorced. They're, they're not in a good place. Yeah. Well, the first thing they have to learn is you're going to have to work. You're going to have to put a bit of effort. You know, you're going to have to sweat. Sure. You're going to have to come to class. You're going to have to, you know, you'll be sore a little bit, but it'll be a good sore. Yeah, a proud sword. Yeah, so yeah, all these yeah. things are kind of the, the thing I try to ingrain in the students. No matter where they want to go, they want to be a fighter, they want to lose weight. Because the people who want to do fighters, we're talking 10%, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Of people who do martial arts. Everybody else, it's about feeling good, health, fitness, being able to defend themselves against an average person. You know, not. You know, Georges Champier is not going to attack you in the subway. Uh, you know, he has other stuff to do. Yeah, you know, yeah he's a busy guy. Exactly. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about, you know, defending his double leg takedown yeah. too, too much in yeah. a real fight. You know, the average person, you're going to defend yourself against the average guy. Yeah. I've always, uh, that's my train of thought when I teach classes. You know, you're not going to get attacked by... By an actual martial uh, artist. Most of the time, the no. the discipline no. and the respect. Most of the time, it won't be that. You know? Most of the time, when you see a fight happen... Neither of the guys can fight. No. Nope. Yeah. So if you have a decent <laughs> skill, you'll be, you know, you're, you're already ahead For sure. of most people. And then all the other stuff. So I always try to teach them discipline. And discipline is something you have to work out all the time. Sometimes you have discipline for a couple of months. Yeah. And then something happens. You get and distracted. Then, whoop, and then you have to get disciplined again. Yeah. You know, so that drive and that discipline, I think, can make you achieve a lot of things. So discipline. I love that word. I think maybe the most undervalued word in the dictionary because people don't talk about it. But no. discipline, because it's not a sexy word. Nope. Discipline is not. It's usually associated with work yeah. and something you have to do yeah, on a daily it's, basis. It's not fun. It's <laughs> yeah. work. It's hard. Uh, but actually discipline, and I read this in a book recently, creates freedom. Absolutely. Right? When you're disciplined with your body, your health, you can eat a slice of pizza and it's not going to no, affect it's not you. Gonna be the end of the world. When you're disciplined with your time, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you actually have more time. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I know you, you're very disciplined with your time as far as when you're in business, when you spend time with your family. Yeah. Right? Then obviously discipline with money. When you're disciplined with money, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you normally have a little bit more money. Exactly. So... What are some of the secrets to developing discipline? Like you're a disciplined guy. You work out every day mm -hmm. out, but normally you're on vacation right now, but normally out, even today, we're going to go train again. You're, yeah. Look how disciplined <laughs> you are. After this interview, we're going to go in the gym and train. So what's the secret to, to discipline? I think it's easier to be disciplined when you found your passion. Nice. Right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, it's know, hard when you hate it. Yeah, Absolutely. So it'll yeah. be, uh, then discipline is associated with, ugh. Yeah. Compared to, oh, oh, we're going to go do it again. You know, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. I'll feel good after. Okay. You know, so I think you have to find, you know, see, Joe used to always tell us that, you know, the Friday night essence. You know, what did you like to do when you were a kid on Friday night? You know, see, Joe loved that. See, Joe was my instructor for a very long time, yeah. my father-in-law. 
uh, a lot of stuff I know comes from him. You know, of course. Talking with him. The creator, the creator yeah. of Feng Shen Being yeah. around him, seeing him. And he had a lot of passion for a lot of stuff. You know, yeah. He was passionate about stuff. So yeah. I think we picked up. You can, I think you can get discipline from hanging around people that are disciplined as well. So I think it's important. If you, have, if you hang around with people that are always negative, they don't want to do nothing. You'll tend to follow yeah. the pack. Lazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you see everybody working hard... And you should lead by example. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that 300 uh, Leonidas guy. He yeah. was in the front. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how I am. Yeah. All right, let's go do that. But I'll wait at the back there and you guys go. And that's not my style. You yeah. know? I'll be in the front with the lead guys. Lead by the front. Yeah, I'll be in the front and we all do it together. You cool. know, So that kind of thing. I think you're dis if you like what you're doing and you believe in what you're doing, it'll be easier to be the discipline. Yep. Even when you're sore, even if you're on vacation, even if, uh, oh man, I did that yesterday. You got to keep at it. So I think you have to find... Something that gives you a spark, something that gives you that uh, that excitement, yeah. and then discipline will become easier. And the better you are at it, then discipline doesn't become as much as being disciplined as becoming a habit. You know, yeah. me, I miss when I don't work out. Yeah, because it's a habit. It's a habit. I yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't like eating crappy food all the time. Yeah. I don't feel good. Yeah, and I yeah. know because I feel good what it feels like not to feel good. I think a lot of people. They, they don't know what it feels like to be healthy yeah because they always eat of crap of course they always don't sleep properly they don't exercise so to them how they feel well isn't this uh how isn't it's supposed to feel yeah no you're not, you could yeah, feel a lot better so i think yeah. after a while you want to feel good you want to same thing with money when you have a bit of money and then you have more money then you find out well i don't really need that i don't really need this mm -hmm. what makes you happy and you just like to do Like a lot of people that we know that are maybe older in life and have, a, have a acquired more stuff. Most of those guys, they always talk about fun. Yeah. No, it's not about the money. It's about I like, I like being busy. I like to have fun. Yeah, yeah. And these guys are the most busiest guys. Like, you know, if I talk to your dad, your dad is, you know, your dad could take a week off. Oh, yeah. And do did, nothing, did, but he yeah. doesn't. No. He always has that enthusiasm. Yeah. About doing things. And CJ was the same. You know, he, he yeah. could, <laughs> it was like uh, he was always doing something. And I, that stayed with me that. The people who don't do nothing, they have, if I find that sad, that they don't have that passion to get up in the morning. Yeah. And that little step of, so that's discipline, but in a fun way. Yeah. So staying busy. Yeah. Is super important, right? I think so. Um, all right, so a couple more things, then we'll, well, I'm, I'm excited to get to training. I know I'm going to get my butt kicked a little bit. <laughs> so with discipline, right? Yeah. So again, let's, let's talk about you specifically, right? Because okay. you're a very disciplined guy, got a successful business. We're changing people's lives in Canada, but even all around the world, right? You got Dave over there. Yeah. So you're a disciplined guy, hard worker. You're good at what you do. What about on days where you don't feel like going to work? On yeah. days where you don't feel like you're <laughs> sore, man. Yeah. You, what you do is yeah, physically yeah. hard. You're a little bit sore. You don't feel like sparring, but you got to. You don't yeah. feel like eating healthy and eating that salad. On days where I know you love what you do, but there's days yeah, where it's for tough. Sure. What do you say to yourself? What's the conversation you're having to get you just just moving in the right direction? <laughs> it might sound funny. I would say you have to have a bit of pride. I love it. I you love know, it. You yeah. have to have a bit of pride, where you know bills are going to pay themselves. Yeah. My kids, my two daughters, my wife, they depend on me. So I think you no, know, not to be. Uh, you have to step up, step up and be the man, you know, like, hey man, if yeah. you don't do it, who else is going to go and do it? Yeah. And for female entrepreneurs, it's the, the woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. My wife is a badass. Like, yeah. She works hard too. You know? Of course. She's you know, taking care of the kids and she does you know, all her classes as well. She has her own program. Yeah. She does all kinds of stuff. Like I'm running around everywhere finding old, uh, old furniture on GGG and she I does see, uh, yeah. five of them in one day when I get back yeah. on her day off when she doesn't have a class. So she's always working too. We, I think you have to step up and take responsibility for things. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to, I'm responsible to bring in money. Well, I, I have to do it. Yeah. Uh, the guy is getting ready. My student is getting ready for a fight and I scheduled him to, to train that day. Well, I wouldn't want him to cancel on me with an excuse. So I have to lead by example again. I, I have to have some pride where I'll be there at 11 and I'm sore and I'm hurt and I would rather, you know, but I'm going to be there anyway and I'm yeah. going to give my 100% and I'll rest after. Yeah. Um, you have to have that bit. I think pride will make you work harder, mm -hmm. will, want to, will make you want to achieve more. Yeah. And if you've gained something, not lose it. Yeah. You know, so I yeah, think yeah. the worst part is 
when you had something and you lose it because you didn't work hard or you let it go, yeah. I think that's uh, very, very... Uh, I love that. That's yeah. bad. So I think you have to have a bit of that pride to... I'm mean, all right, man. Let's go one, yeah, yeah, one yeah. more time, one to, more round, to one, dig one deep. more time. Pride, man. That's you're dropping words right now that are really not used all the time. But <laughs> okay. in conversations, you know, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to meet some successful people. Yeah. These are words that they use: discipline, obsession, pride. Yeah. These words aren't used by the average person. Mm-hmm. That's why the average person doesn't have huge results. Yeah, you know. So I love you using those words. Okay. Last but not least. And by the way, last but not uh, before I even get to that, you guys, if you have not connected with uh, Patrick, Christine, any of the Pat Note family on Facebook, make sure you do so because you know you said something when you put yourself around disciplined people, mm-hmm. hardworking people, even positive people. You guys, you guys are fighters, which might sound you know if you've never been to martial arts, might sound intense. You guys are some of the most fun. Outgoing people I've ever met. Like you guys like to have a good time. Yep. Like to laugh. Like to. Some of you guys like to party a little bit. That comes right? with being comfortable <laughs> with you know who you are. Of course, yeah, yeah. of course. So uh, make sure you guys connect with them on Facebook, on social media. Some of the best people on planet Earth. But last but not least, because I want to give a an interesting perspective. Okay. To um, I would say yeah, martial arts, but the mental side of it, mm-hmm. and some of the easier physical side of it. Yeah. So, for example, you're a super tough guy. You can fight with the best of them. But two things stand out to me when it comes to Feng Shen Do. One is physical flexibility. Okay. How important is it to stretch? Very important. Very important. Absolutely. People don't talk about this. No. Stretching is the, you know, people, uh, they talk, in Quebec, we had, there was a joke for a couple of uh, months now on the internet, a chest bras. What is that? Chest and arms. Okay. Yeah. yeah That's yeah, yeah. all people do at the gym. Yeah. yeah so yeah, there yeah. was videos in Quebec, they were really funny and mm-hmm. then everybody knew. Chest bras. Everybody pumps their arms. Everybody pumps their chest. Yep. But their little chicken legs, yeah, yeah, their yeah. back, and their neck they is can't like touch that. Their toes. No, they can't move. Yeah. So that's not good. Mm-hmm. Especially your body is going to be the lim- more limber you are, uh, you won't be as uh, stiff and sore, right? Yeah. Your of range of flexibility is better, and this will help you in everything you do, like your posture, mm-hmm. any type of sport you do. Whether you're flexible in your neck, people think as flexibility, they think Van Damme right away, you know? Yeah, I want to do this blitz. Flexibility in your legs, your shoulders, your chest, your neck, yeah. your spine, uh, all that is being flexible. Um, when you're flexible, and this is uh, all got people in Nigong or like energy wise from yeah. martial arts, like the internal, your energy flows better in your body, your blood flows better in your body. The electricity in your body flows better, so that affects your mind and the projection of stuff and your thoughts. Wow. So all that stuff is good. You won't be as sore. You yeah. will feel better. Your posture is better, you know, when you get older. Of course, yeah. So when, you, when you're when flexible and your posture is right, this will, you're kind of trying to, you know, challenge uh, time a little bit there. Yeah, you know? yeah. you're give, beating you're beating. Oh, yeah, you're trying, you're trying to you give him a good run for his money. Yeah. So being flexible is also going to help you uh, not getting injuries, mm-hmm. recover faster. And uh, being do the splits is a nice uh, party uh, thing. People like it's that. Cool oh, it's a cool little thing. Go back to what you said there earlier. You, go. you can do and you can do the splits, man. I've <laughs> yeah, seen it. Yeah. So, so that's one. The physical, you know, stretching. Yep. Second, and again, just more interesting perspective on on what you guys do, and this is why I think you guys just have the best program on planet Earth because it's more than just fighting. Like, oh yeah, people yeah. Don't, it has to be. Yeah, yeah. People don't affiliate like oh being able to do the splits or your you know your energy flowing through your body with fighting Absolutely the average not. person doesn't think that no. it's crucial though even in success mm-hmm. so we talked about physical stretching physical flexibility but even mental exercises you know mm-hmm. i went and i was fortunate to come train with you guys years ago and almost every class it may have been every class but i don't want to speak out of out of bounds almost every class we either started or finished with, yes, stretching for sure, mm-hmm. but mental exercises. Yep. Sitting down, the eye exercise where you'd look up and down, yep. and, right? You get the neural mm-hmm. pathways going. The breathing exercise, right? Yep. The one, four, two method. Exactly. How important is that? Your mind is everything, right? It's the computer of your, bo- uh, of your body. It's like yeah. the car. I make, uh, with fighters sometimes, I try to make uh, comparisons with everybody gets, you know? Uh-huh. You have a big car. The paint is nice, the big rims, the big muffler, but the starter doesn't work. What are you going to do with that car? Well, at that point, it doesn't do nothing. Even if it's got a thousand horsepower, it's not going anywhere. So the mind has to be 
turned on, the mind has to be excited. So then what your mind tells your body to do, the body will do it, right? Yeah. It's not the other way around. So to be able to focus your thoughts before every training or every morning when you get up, you know, doing stuff like being thankful, being happy, planning your day in your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, like I plan my classes, I plan what I want to talk about. And in class, we do a lot of stuff about, like I said earlier, indirectly or directly when I talk to my students, everything for me is a way of life. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell them, you know, you want to lose five pounds? Well, that's just as important as a guy who wants to win a belt. There's no different to that person. Absolutely. That's his challenge. The other guy has his challenge. Yeah. But it all starts in your mind. You know, what, what will make me feel better? What will make me feel accomplished that day? And how I can put my mind to my task and then my body just follows. And if the body's not in shape, then the mind can tell it to do something. And then the body just gives out. Right? Yeah, for sure. I'm too tired. I need to drink, uh, you know, the coffee digs big yeah. with the monster <laughs> energy drink or I'm going to fall down because I don't need any of those I know. Things, right? I offered you a cup of coffee for coffee talk. You said I've never had coffee before. So I love that. So, so in closing, man, thank you so much for this. My pleasure. I, I, I'm fired up about this, man. Like I'm fired up just to live a better life now um, and to go train. For people watching, this is the conclusion of Coffee Talk with uh, my good friend Patrick Here's what I want you to leave with, aside from every, all the knowledge he just dropped, is those two last principles. Because those are two things you can, you can do immediately. Yep. You can start stretching. You, you can watch this again and be stretching while you, while you Absolutely. listen to it. Start stretching. It is critical. If I don't get a workout in, you know, I got business and babies. I can't m make the excuses, obviously. But one thing that I just don't miss is, is, is stretching. I get in that garage every day. Do my stretching there you go. and then follow it up with the breathing exercises, mm -hmm. right? Take some deep breaths. Focus on what's ahead of me today. What, what am I tackling? What am I going after? Exactly. So those are two things along with discipline, putting yourself around the right people. Those two things you can do immediately and you'll start seeing results. All right? So Patrick, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Thank you very let's much. go train. Let's go, let's go yes. get a workout in. People watching, thank you so much. I appreciate your time more than you know. You can find Patrick on Facebook. He can be tagged in this video. Connect with him. He's one of the best people on planet Earth. And uh, thank you for watching.